Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Cuyahoga County Economic Development and Planning Committee meeting for Monday, March 5th, 2018 uh, will be called to order. And prior to calling roll, pursuant to Rule 12F of the Council Rules, Council President Brady has appointed Council Member Miller as a member of, uh, pro tem of the Economic Development and Planning Committee. And this way we will have a quorum this, morning, this afternoon. Uh, if I could have the roll call, please. Calling the roll, Mr. Schron. Mr. Schron is absent at the moment. Mr. Tuma? Here. Mr. Hauser? Here. Ms. Baker? Ms. Baker is absent at the moment. Ms. Simon? Ms. Simon is absent at the moment. Mr. Miller? Here. We have a quorum. Okay. Uh, Madam Clerk, is there any public comment related to the agenda uh, this afternoon? No, no one has signed in. Okay. With that, could we uh, have you read the, uh, uh, pr I'm sorry, could we get approval of minutes from the January 22nd, 2018? If I could have a motion uh, to approve those minutes. So moved. Okay, and I'll second that. Um, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Ayes have it. And Madam Clerk, if you could uh, start with the first matter uh, referred to committee. Resolution number 2018-0048, authorizing an economic development fund place-based mixed-use loan in the amount not to exceed $2 million to Project 29 Partners, LLC for the benefit of the church and state mixed use project located at 2850 Detroit Avenue in the city of Cleveland. Okay. Um, and uh, we, we have representatives uh, here <clears throat> this afternoon. Um, if you could please state your name uh, for the record. Yes, good afternoon. I'm Matthew Sell, Department of Development. Excuse me, can you press the button? Yeah, if you can. I'm Anthony that. Stella with Department of Development. Okay. Uh, and uh, if you could, Anthony, just uh, give us a, uh, I, I know we have the, this uh, presentation pro, uh, provided to council um, members. Yes. Um, if you want to maybe just explain uh, the status of this and uh, where you guys are at. Yes, I can, uh, I can do that and I'm, okay, there we go. Uh, so this project, uh, the t uh, name of the project is Church and State. The entity we'll be lending our money to is Project 29 Partners, LLC. This is a mixed-use place-based project, um, again, at 2850 Detroit Avenue, which places it at the intersection of 29th and Detroit. Um, the project will consist of two buildings. Uh, one is 11 stories, one is six. It's a mixed-use. We'll have retail, residential, and parking, uh, all told 19,000 square feet of retail space. Um, there'll be 40 permanent jobs at this site. And during the construction period of 21 months, uh, we'll see 125 construction jobs. Uh, these also are uh, Davis-Bacon uh, federal prevailing wage jobs due to uh, HUD participation in the project. And some of the benefits uh, to the county uh, and local government and state uh, through property tax of $1.5 million. There'll be a one-time benefit of $1.4 million in sales tax due to the construction activity and uh, $93,000 in new income tax revenue. Um, here's just a site plan of the site showing um, the two buildings. Uh, in between, there's a, some public space which will be open to all members of the public. There'll be some programming put in that space so that uh, lends itself very well to being a place-based uh, development project. And some of the benefits to uh, place-based development is that it helps leverage public amenities and other assets um, to help create some progress. Um, studies have shown that communities using this type of development have, uh, th there's benefits that extend beyond just this specific project site. Um, there's some human development um, aspects and that it creates, uh, especially in these types of neighborhoods where you're creating jobs and development in neighborhoods that are accessible by uh, transit and other means to, to uh, get there. Um, the loan we're looking to do is a $2 million loan uh, through the place-based uh, mixed-use program at an interest rate of 3%. Uh, our security on the deal is a uh, second lien position behind a HUD loan and guarantees from all partners. There's uh, six total partners in this project. And um, we have a loan-to-value ratio of uh, very strong, 72%. Uh, we, we require anything under 90, uh, 90%. Some of the um, other sources of funding on this, the HUD, uh, as mentioned, HUD will be uh, putting in a $43 million loan into the project. That loan uh, has a 40-year uh, amortization with 4.5% interest. Um, 
There is a small grant coming in from City of Cleveland uh, in the amount of 190,000 and about 310,000 from the sewer district. They'll be incorporating uh, green initiatives into the into the parking lot, doing uh, bioswales and you know some other efforts to reduce storm runoff. Uh, the City of Cleveland um, today, I believe, they're uh, approving a TIF for the project in the amount of uh, 4.25 million. It's a non-school TIF which will go into the project and the, uh, the developers are putting in just under $7 million in equity into the, into the uh, project. It's a total of uh, just under $57 million in, uh, in development. This deal was recommended for approval by our uh, CCCIC body uh, back on December 13th. Um, they just had a couple requirements of making sure we had the appraisal, market study, and a break-even analysis. We've received all those items, and uh, we reviewed them, and they meet all our requirements for underwriting. At this moment, I'll open it up for any questions okay. that you have on this portion. Um, uh, first thing, just to um, reiterate or clarify, I suppose. So as far as the um, uh, taxes coming back to the county, I believe you said $1.4 million in, in sales tax from, is that what that was, what you said? Uh, yeah, one-time sales tax of $1.4 million. Okay, and that would be from? That's from the construction, construction. activity, purchasing of materials. and. Okay, um, and then you said uh, $93,000 uh, annually income tax? In income tax, correct, and revenue. which would be to okay. the city of Cleveland. Okay, to, to Cleveland, okay. Okay, um, and then I, I see this. Is named Church and State. What's the, what's the? Uh, oh yeah, I can go over that, that for you. So the um, uh, West Twenty Eighth Street. Its former name was uh, was State Street. Okay. And the street that runs parallel to Detroit Avenue to the south is is Church Avenue. So it's just a play on. Okay. Uh, play on those. Well, I got this. I got the church one. I'm looking at it, but I didn't get the West Twenty Eighth one. So. Yeah. Okay. I thought maybe there was some religious aspect to this. I was trying to figure. No, out. No, there's so. definitely not. Okay. Just... Maybe a church going. On. Okay. Um, and then. Um, why, uh, why the county involvement with uh, needing to procure the, the loan amount for two million? What, what is the what necessitates that uh, on the part of uh, these partners going in? Why can't they do the funding themselves? I'm just um, asking. Th this is just a gap that they had in the in in the project. Um, we this is typically on development deals. We only fund up. We only help fund a project if there's a if there's a gap in it. So between all the sources that they were able to line up for the, uh, for the, for the deal, it left them a gap of $2 million. Okay, and then what, what types of, uh, and forgive me if you said this already, but what type of, type of uh, jobs are you expecting to be? You said 40 mm -hmm. jobs there. What, what kind of jobs are these? These would be uh, jobs in the, the retail uses there. They're looking to, uh, to try to get um, pharmacies, a pharmacy or a um, hardware store neighborhood type uses so the jobs would exist there and also in the management of the of the property okay, okay. um I'll open up questions to my colleagues mr hauser uh just a uh, real quick question and i was wondering about the jobs as well as far as the 125 construction jobs have um this project reached out to union or minority uh, contractors for this job um, I don't know the specific answer to that. I know that it's, um, and I have my developer here who can speak to that later. Um, I do know that it's a requirement that this is a Davis-Bacon project, so I would assume that the, you know, that the unions would be involved in that because uh, the HUD puts those requirements please, on Please there. do because, you know, a lot of people come and we always ask that question. And I um, saw Mike, or we always ask that question. They always say they do. And then when we go expect these projects, I, I, I'm speaking for myself, never see any um, minority or, or um, uh, contractor. So please let me know and follow up with me. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, Mr. Miller? How long is the loan for, and what's the amortization schedule? Uh, the county's loan. It's yes, for it's, twen it's 25 years, and it's amortized over 25 years, the full amount. The straight? Straight, straight amortization, yes. 25-year amortization. Correct. And uh, what is our expectation on, on what a rental unit will cost? Um, so the, uh, they're marketing at a... 
$2.25 per square foot. The majority of units will be either studio or one bedroom. So those rents will be um, around the $1,300 to about $1,600 range for the majority of the units. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Any further questions? Okay. Um, <clears throat> is there anybody else here to speak on uh, behalf of this project? Yes. Um, Michael Panzika is here with the, okay. uh, with the developer. Okay. Hi, good afternoon. How you doing? Uh, thank you for having me in and, and uh, entertaining uh, a project that we are very excited about delivering. Um, Tony touched on really a number of the high points, um, but uh, the project, Church and State, we expect to be breaking ground within the next 90 days. The uh, primary source of financing is a HUD uh, loan, which we are in the final stages of the approval. And like I said, we ex expect to be closed and under construction within the next 90 days. Uh, the result of which will be a, about a $57 million project totaling 158 apartment units, 19,000 square feet of retail. And one thing I wanted to reiterate that Tony mentioned that <clears throat> the, the intention of this retail is to be um, utilitarian, amenity-based retail for the neighborhood. It's not going to be necessarily a food and beverage okay. uh, destination. Rather, we want to be able to provide... Uh, services that are no, aren't in the neighborhood currently. So we are in discussions with the pharmacy. We've had discussions with the hardware store, perhaps a dental office, a, veter a veterinarian clinic, things of that nature. Uh, there's also going to be about 204 parking spaces, so more than enough to service both the um, apartments but also the commercial space that we'll be bringing online. For those of you familiar with the area, this is in the now Hingetown area of Ohio City, which sits at Detroit Avenue between West 28th and West 29th Street, an area that's seen a significant investment and continues to to this day. Um, this can be, as Tony mentioned, broken out between two buildings totaling 158 square feet. We're going to have everything from studio to three bedroom units, so we want to be able to cater to as many uh, types of renters as we can. Um, other things that I'll touch on is that the pedestrian walkway that uh, bifurcates the two buildings is about 9,000 square feet. It is truly going to be open to the public while it will be maintained and owned by us privately, but it will never be closed off. The entrances and exits to the um, buildings themselves will be from that interior courtyard. So again, not to shut our back to the neighborhood, but rather to embrace it. And then you see here some of the renderings of the project. Uh, if I could speak to, uh, to the question directed before, this will be a 100% union project. Um, we are required to do Davis-Bacon prevailing wage, but we have taken it one step further and, and engaged with the unions. We are also working with um, the local trades to provide uh, high school and students uh, internships through the construction process. And uh, we've also engaged our neighbors uh, at Lakeview Estates to the north, and we've gotten actually a, a letter of support from their advisory council in support of this project and what we're looking to bring to the area. Um, how many units are going to be there? You might have said this already, but... 158. 158? Yes. And have you started um, leasing already? No. So it'll be a 21-month construction period, and if we start in 90 days, we'll be looking to open about two years from today. Um, so typically, most uh, individuals and renters don't look to move until they're about six months out. Okay. Um, Ms. Simon, do you have any questions? I'd like to recognize Ms. Simon has joined us. Yeah. Have you asked all the questions about securing the loan and those fundamental things? Are you done with your presentation? Uh, we. Uh, yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, we touched on uh, on that. You um, did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what's the security? The can I ask again for the loan? Yes, the security for the loan is a uh, second position mortgage. We're going to be behind um, HUD. They have a they have the first lien, and then we're also securing personal guarantees from all of the partners in the project. And if I could speak to the partnership, it's a partnership between Hemingway Development, which is myself, uh, Fred Geis, and Jim Doyle, um, and then Marika uh, Clark and Graham Vesey, who have developed a lot of what is uh, around that area currently, and then Brent Zimmerman, um, who has also developed the Steelman building into what is now the Saucy Brew um, Brewery and Pizza Place, as well as the Title Boxing Gym. That's the okay. partnership. Any follow-up? Yeah, so why, why come to the county for this loan? Was there sure. just a lack? I'm sorry if people asked this already. but No, that's fair. Um, 
the new construction product, there's always a, a gap in really what is um, achievable and affordable and what you know we can put online. And so while the market is very healthy and robust in terms of the rental rates and the occupancy and continues to do uh, just that, the, um, the our investors that we are able to attract have a certain return metric, which uh, requires us to seek items like a TIF and a subordinate loan. Okay. All right. Good questions. Uh, any further questions of uh, the gentleman? Mr. Hauser? Uh, just a super quick question. When will the loan um, begin being repaid? When does the loan um, payback start? Um, the, the payback would start as soon as they uh, pull down some of the funds. Okay. That's generally how we... Uh, we so this is two them. years after... This is uh, when they begin working. When, when would this be implemented? Two years from now? Uh, you guys will have this project finished? That's right. Okay. But, no. Yes, but they'll probably be requesting money prior prior to well, that. We were, yeah, the intention would be to draw the construction through construction the funds. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yep. Is there any penalty for early payment? Uh, no. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, any additional questions? So Councilwoman Simon wants to know about the 40 jobs. You guys explain it. Please explain so she's aware as well. Sure, sure. That's so okay. it'll be primarily within the uh, commercial components. We have about 19,000 square feet of uh, ground floor retail. And uh, I mentioned the types of retailers we we're trying to attract, pharmacy and things like that. It will primarily be there as well as in the operations of the building. So you're looking for local businesses maybe instead of chains and things that would... No question, yes. No question. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Okay, and as expressed by this committee in pr to, to previous um, entities seeking to do business and obtain loans, one of our concerns as a committee is to make sure that there is an actual uh, benefit coming back to the county through jobs um, and not just um, you know creating, re uh, creating um, apartment complexes and just uh, using the county to get easy loans, cheap loans back, things like that. So um, we've expressed that on a number of occasions. Um, and so it's important. That's why we're asking these questions about jobs and what type of jobs and how many and income tax and that sort of stuff. So um, that's why we have a uh, concern about that stuff. OK, um, any other questions for the committee members? And so you're on a time frame here. You said you'd like to, what, within 90 days, you want to get moving on this. So. Um, any request here, um, second reading suspension is what you're looking for? Um, yes, if that's possible. Okay. Um, if my colleagues have any objection to moving this along uh, so they can obtain their funding and such, um, I ask for a second reading uh, suspension request for a motion for second reading suspension. Anybody? Okay. All right. So we have a, a motion for second reading suspension. I'll second that. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Opposed nay. Okay, and the ayes have it. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, thank you, Chairman. Okay, um, Madam Clerk, is there any other miscellaneous business for the, before the committee? Okay, um, and is there any public comment before the committee? No, no one has signed in. Okay, all right. With that, uh, anything from the? Uh, oh, you're right. Miscellaneous business. I see folks here. So okay, so from the committee, none. Okay. Um, and with that, uh, I have a motion to adjourn. Sorry. Okay, I have a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes had it. And uh, Economic uh, Development uh, and Planning Committee will adjourn at uh, 2.19 p.m.